Today we're talking about GPT 5.1, which was just released by OpenAI and it's already everywhere. I've been seeing the headlines all over social media and after diving into the specs and running my own tests, I can confidently say that this model is a big leap forward. In this video, I'm going to break down what's new, why it matters, and why you should start integrating GPT 5.1 into your agents and automations immediately. And of course, I'll show you how to connect GPT 5.1 inside of NAN and build a real AI agent workflow. Then we'll run some fun side-by-side -side comparisons against previous models to show you exactly how much better this model performs inside of NAN. Let's get right into it. Like I said, we're going to do a full breakdown of GPT 5.1, but we're also going to relate it to AI automation and NAN specifically, because that's what this channel is all about. GPT 5.1 was officially released on November 12th, 2025, and rolled out to the API platform the following day on November 13th. So being that it's currently November 14th, this is extremely fresh stuff. GPT 5.1 is the latest iteration in the GPT model family from OpenAI, and it's the direct successor to GPT 5. It builds on the improvements we saw there, especially around reasoning, tool usage, and reliability for automation workflows. This release actually comes with two key variants. GPT 5.1 Instant, this version is optimized for everyday conversational tasks. It's faster, more responsive, and it follows instructions way more accurately. Then there is the thinking version. This one is designed for deeper reasoning and more complex tasks. It dynamically decides how much thinking time it needs, which helps reduce unnecessary latency while still giving more intelligent results when required. So now let's take a look at what actually improved from GPT-5 to GPT-5.1, because these upgrades are where things start getting really exciting for all automations and AI agents. First, GPT 5.1 has significantly better instruction following. It tends to stay on task and avoids the kind of rambling, irrelevant output that earlier models sometimes produced. This means more predictable results and fewer retries inside of automated workflows. Second, it introduces something called adaptive reasoning. That means the model decides internally when it needs to spend more time thinking on complex tasks and when to respond quickly to simpler tasks. So you get a balance of speed and depth without manually configuring different modes every time. And third, which is my favorite, the responses are more natural and customizable. You can now choose styles like professional, friendly, candid, or others, which is extremely useful when you're generating customer-facing content, emails, support messages, or agent responses that need to match your brand voice. Sam Altman actually highlighted these improvements on launch day, mentioning big jumps in instruction following, adaptive thinking, and customization, and those line up exactly with what we're seeing in testing. So why does this matter for automation? Because GPT 5.1 gives us more reliability and more control. That means fewer workflow failures, less babysitting, and faster responses. All right, let's take a look at pricing, because pricing is obviously very important to all of us. GPT 5.1 comes in at the exact same pricing as GPT 5, $1.25 per million input tokens and $10 per million output tokens. Just for comparison, last year's GPT 4.0 costed $2.50 per million input tokens, double the cost. So we're seeing a trend where every generation becomes more powerful while also becoming cheaper to operate. So from a pricing perspective, GPT 5.1 is a no-brainer to start implementing into your workflows. Now, something I'm still watching out for and they haven't announced it yet is whether GPT 5.1 will also release with Mini and Nano versions like we saw with GPT 5 and GPT 4.1. If you're unfamiliar, Mini and Nano are lightweight versions of models that are extremely inexpensive to run and they're great for high volume tasks. So if that's announced, then I'll post it in the comments or something. Let's talk about benchmarks. Since GPT 5.1 is the next model in the GPT 5 series, the raw benchmark numbers are only marginally better than GPT 5. So on paper, the improvements don't look dramatic. But what really matters here is how the improvements show up. One of the biggest complaints about GPT-5 was speed. Even simple tasks could take far too long. OpenAI clearly heard that feedback and they redesigned how the model allocates reasoning. If you look at the chart on the left, you can see GPT-5.1 spends far fewer tokens on easier tasks, up to 70 to 88% less, which means much faster responses and lower token usage. But on the right side of that same graph, you'll notice that for harder tasks, GPT 5.1 actually invests more thinking tokens, up to 36% more, which leads to better accuracy when it matters. And you can see that reflected in the software engineering bench chart on the right, GPT 5.1 reaches higher verified accuracy with fewer thinking tokens and climbs faster than GPT 5 across low 
medium, and high reasoning levels. So while the benchmark numbers may look close overall, the real-world performance jump is significant, faster on simpler tasks, smarter on complex tasks, and far more efficient for automation workflows. Looking at the GPT 5.1 release notes, there are testimonies from companies who have already seen massive improvements with this model. This asset management company said GPT 5.1 outperformed both GPT 4.1 and GPT 5 in our full dynamic evaluation suite while running two to three times faster than GPT 5. They also said across their tool heavy reasoning tasks, GPT 5.1 consistently used about half as many tokens as leading competitors at similar or better quality. Similarly, AI insurance BPO Pace also tested the model and said their agents run 50% faster on GPT 5.1 while exceeding accuracy of GPT-5 and other leading models across our evals. With that context in mind, let's talk about what these improvements actually mean for automation inside of NAN. In short, GPT-5.1 makes agent workflows noticeably faster and more reliable by using reasoning more efficiently, which reduces failures and speeds up execution. We also get much smarter tool calling and more consistent structured output, which means cleaner branching logic and far less prompt engineering. Even though it's the same price as GPT-5, it effectively costs less to run because of optimized tokage usage and faster responses, meaning fewer retries and greater scalability. The more natural human-sounding responses and tone control are also huge, especially for customer-facing workflows like support or inbox automation, which we're going to test later in the video. And ultimately, the GPT-5 series unlocks truly autonomous multi-step workflows with minimal setup, opening the door for developers and businesses to deploy smart AI agents at scale across many industries. All right, here's the plan for the hands-on portion of this video. First, we're going to set up an AI agent inside of NAN using GPT 5.1, so you can see how easy it is to plug it into a real workflow. Next, we'll test the tool usage and compare GPT 5.1 against GPT 5 to see how well it handles real multi-step actions and tool calling. Then we'll run evaluation tests so we can measure performance in terms of cost, speed, and accuracy side by side. And finally, we'll test one of my favorite updates, tone control. We'll have it write the same email in different styles to see how natural and adaptable GPT 5.1 really is. So real quick, I'll show you how to connect GPT 5.1 and NAN in case you've never hooked up an AI agent before. It's super simple. So what I'll do is drag in an AI agent node connected to a chat trigger. And so this makes it so we can open up the chat down here and message our agent. I'll say, hey, but there's an error because of the fact that there's no AI model attached to the agent to respond back to us. Think of this as the brain of the agent. So to add a brain, we'll click this plus icon under chat model. And since GPT 5.1 is released by OpenAI, I'm gonna scroll down and find the OpenAI chat model. There it is. So our chats will come in through the input, be processed by whatever GPT model we choose from this list here, and then the output will be sent back to the chat. Though you need to connect your OpenAI account in order to select a GPT model from this list. So quickly, I'm going to show you how to set that up by creating a new credential. So click create new credential, and you see we need an API key, which is kind of like a password to connect your OpenAI account to NAN. So go to openai.com, click on login and create a new account if you don't already have one. Go to your profile, go to the billing and make sure you have some billing information and some credits in your account. I think the minimum they let you add is $5, but it's gonna last you a long time. Running these models is extremely cheap. Click API keys. Click create new secret key, give it any name you want, select your project, and click create secret key. Then it's going to show you your API key that you can copy and paste into this field and click save, and it should say connection tested successfully. Now real quick, I want to mention you should copy this key and put it somewhere secure like your notes, because once you close this modal, they're not going to show you your API key again. Cool, so you should now be connected to your OpenAI account, which means we have access to any model we want. I'll open up this list and search for GPT 5.1. I'll select it, and once that's done, I can exit out of this node and then open up the chat and send another message. And now our AI agent is going to respond to us using GPT 5.1. I'm in my ultimate Gmail agent workflow, and it's an agent that has access to seven different Gmail tools. It can get emails, send emails, reply to threads, create drafts, label emails. So I'm gonna open up the chat model and change this from GPT 4.1 to GPT 5.1. And now I'm gonna give it some tests. So I'll open up the chat, and I'm gonna ask it to summarize my latest three emails. 
So it's thinking and it's using the get emails tool. So it knew to use the get emails tool instead of any one of these other tools. It very quickly gave me a detailed summary for each email. And from a quick glance, it looks like the summaries are accurate. So from that, we can tell that the agent is able to accurately call tools, but I think we should give it more of an advanced query to see if it can handle multiple tool calls. Okay, I'm going to say, get my latest two emails, label them according to priority, draft a reply, and then mark them as unread. So the agent is thinking, it's using the get emails tool first, and it's using the get labels tool. It's using the label email tool twice, creating a draft twice and marking both as unread, just like we told it to. And if we check our email, those two latest ones are labeled. One is medium and one is low. And we can see both of them have a draft as well. So let's go into the draft. So if we look at both of these drafts, they look pretty good and they're signing off as Kyle, which is what we told the agent to do here in the system prompt. So it's following all the instructions and using the tools properly. Not to mention that was a very fast execution, definitely a lot faster than GPT-5 would have done. And now that I mentioned it, let's see how long that would have taken GPT-5. So I'm gonna search GPT-5 in the model list and give this a test run. I've deleted the labels from the emails and deleted the drafts as well, and then marked them as unread. And then I'm sending the same exact prompt. Okay, right from the get-go, it's taking a lot longer to use the get emails tool and it's taking a lot longer to figure out what to do next after getting the emails and labels. So I'm probably gonna have to fast forward the video here. I didn't have to fast forward the video last time. Uh, it just went so quickly last time. Yeah, that's taking a very long time. There we go. It finally used all the tools it needed to. So GPT-5 will still use the proper tools, but it's going to take a lot longer than GPT-5.1. Numbers wise, I had to go back in the footage to find it, but the execution time for GPT 5.1 was 13 seconds and GPT 5, as you can see, is 43 seconds. All right, now we'll do an evaluation. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of running evaluations, it's just a way to see which model performs better by having the models run through specific tests and tracking their accuracy. We'll also be able to see the total tokens used and the execution time. Now, like I said earlier, GPT-5 and GPT-5.1 are very similar when it comes to intelligence and benchmarks. So they're both going to perform very well when it comes to accuracy. And so the thing we're gonna be looking for is the token usage, AKA how much it costs and execution time. The first test, we're going to use GPT-5. And so I'll go to the evaluations tab and click run test. So what this is currently doing is it's sending through 10 rows of our test data, which is incoming customer emails and their expected sentiment. So if the customer says, just wanted to say your team was super helpful today, thank you. The expected sentiment for that is grateful. And so in production, the subject and body would go to the agent and we want it to accurately determine the sentiment. So the point of the evaluation is to send each of these to the AI agent and have it assess the sentiment. And then at the end of the evaluation, it'll determine the overall accuracy score by comparing the assessed values to the expected values. All right, so just finished up and we can see the total tokens, the execution time and the string similarity, which is the accuracy score. Now I'm gonna go back to the editor and choose the GPT 5.1 model and give that a test run. So GPT 5.1, I'll go to evaluations and run test. So it just finished up and you can see that the GPT 5 took over five seconds to complete, 5,356 milliseconds and used 556 total tokens. Then GPT 5.1 finished the exact same task in 1.8 seconds and used only 396 total tokens. That's more than a three times speed improvement and about 30% fewer tokens used. So from that, we can see that GPT 5.1 effectively costs less and performs better. And for automation and AI agents, that compounds into huge performance and scalability gains. Now let's test one of the new features that I think is actually really important for automation, tone control. GPT 5.1 gives us much more natural human sounding responses and you can switch between tones like professional, friendly, and more. That's a big deal for workflows like email automation and sales outreach. So we're back in the ultimate Gmail agent here. And I'm just gonna have it draft two different emails to my other email, one in a professional tone and then one in a candid tone. I'll say draft two different emails to businessfreeallgmail.com, one in a professional tone and the other in a candid tone. It should be an email apologizing for a delayed response to a customer about their order status. I'll send that off and I'll let you know when that's done. Okay, the agent finished up really quick actually. And here it says the subject apology for delayed response on order status is the tone professional and the other one is candid. So let's go to our drafts. 
I pulled them both up here. So this one is the professional one and this one is the candid one. We'll first read through the professional. Dear customer, I hope you are well. I am writing to sincerely apologize for the, the delay in responding to your inquiry regarding the status of your order. We understand how important timely updates are and we regret any inconvenience this delay may have caused. So very professional language going on here. Let's read the candid one. Hi there, I wanted to reach out and apologize for taking longer than I should have to get back to you about your order status. I know waiting for an update can be frustrating and I'm sorry for the delay on our end. The professional version is polished, has formal wording, and is structured like a real business email. Then the candid version is more direct, it's warmer, and more conversational and human. This is the type of tone shift that could sometimes require a ton of prompt engineering within the agent system prompt. But with GPT 5.1, it's basically built in. That's it for today. GPT 5.1 is a massive upgrade for automation, and now you've seen it in action. If you want this template, there's a link in the description where you can download it for free. Also, if you're interested in being a part of a community full of AI enthusiasts, then definitely consider joining my free school community. I share all of my templates from these YouTube videos for free in here, so it's a great resource. If you found this helpful, like the video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.